Hello and welcome to another video of AI in blockchain. So as we have been discussing, really the artificial intelligence and machine learning models can be applied to blockchain data or data coming in from the blockchain outside the blockchain. And this is another attempt to show you how time series forecasting can be applied on the prices of the Bitcoin. So let's do a quick time series forecasting. This is gonna be a very simple video for you to understand how could you predict or at least try to predict the prices of a coin. So with that said, I'm gonna use a couple of Python packages, Yahoo Finance and Profit. Yahoo Finance will help me get the data in a 30 minute or any window that I'm looking for. And profit is gonna be the time series forecasting uh, library. So this is what I'm gonna do. You could follow along. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. You can follow along if you would like in order to understand how all of this works. So import pandas, numpy, by Yahoo Finance and profit. And I have like whole other series of videos to see how this collab works, how you could write Python codes and stuff like that. So step number one, create a collab notebook, Python notebook. Number two, install Yahoo Finance and profit packages. Number three, import libraries. Number four, set a few parameters. So start date, I'm gonna take December 1st. End date, I'm gonna take end of December. Obviously we are not at the end of the December yet, but this is just a date, maximum date. Interval, 30 minutes. I wanna get data for 30 minutes window, candlesticks and ticker, BTC USD. So the ticker could be different from for different websites, uh, for Yahoo Finance, for for Bitcoin, it's BTC hyphen USD, all right? Now, so use Yahoo Finance to download the ticker data in a data frame. So this is how you're gonna do it. YF, Yahoo Finance, dot download ticker, which is your BTC, start date, end date, and the interval. So all of these parameters can be changed if you would like to do a 15 minutes or an hour or a daily level. Next reset the index. So when you download the data, you will get the data in a date timestamp, which is gonna be indexed. And then you have close, adjusted close volume and stuff. So I wanna reset the index. So reset the index level zero in place true. And then let's print it out. So if I run this, it's gonna print out how it's gonna look like, look at that. So date time, open, high, low, close, adjusted close and volume. Next, now I want to have just two columns for time series forecasting. I wanna get the date as DS and close as Y. So I'm gonna create a new data frame, crypto underscore DF with date time and close. And then I'm gonna rename date time DS and close Y. The reason I wanted to do it is because this profit library would only accept the, the data in the form of DS and Y. Y, y being the, the column that you are wanna predict or forecast and date timestamp is gonna be DS. And then I'm gonna print the crypto. So let's do that, there you go. This is how it's gonna look like, DS and Y with the start and and the price at close, and this is at a 30 minute interval. Now, let's do one more step, right? Let's start the model prediction. So I'm gonna do the time series forecasting. So M is the model, profit, interval with 0.95. So I'm gonna have, this is a parameter that you wanna be setting up for profit. What is interval width? You can read it online. The, the idea of this tutorial is to make you understand how you predict it. Next, m.fit, model.fit meaning fit the data in the crypto DF, this data set, to start the predictions. And then 
future. So this is M, which is the model dot make future data frame. So it's gonna create additional four periods. That means four rows records with a frequency of 30 minutes in the future. So I'm gonna show you how, how it'll work. But for example, if now is midnight, then it'll add four periods. That means it's gonna predict for the next two hours at 30 minutes interval. I'm gonna see that in a few minutes, right? Forecast is m.predict. So m is the model, model.fit, fit the data, make future data frames, and m.predict the future. This is the forecast. And then I'm just rounding it off. And then I'm creating a data frame which will have data timestamp. This is the Y means predicted median, right? Lower means the lower range, upper means the upper range. So it's gonna show you a range. Remember this diagram, this is the upper range, this is the lower range, and this blue line in the middle is the mean. Make sense? And then I'm gonna merge the crypto DF with the forecast to see the actual versus predicted in order to get an understanding of how good or bad the model is. And then I'm gonna rename the column back from DS to date time and Y I'm gonna say actual and Y hat is predicted. So Y hat, so this is your actual and this is upper bound, this is lower bound. And ignore this and I'm doing the forecast. If I run this, we're able to see that it's predicting and this is the forecast. Look at this, whenever it says for actuals, it says actual would be, is 8, 16, 893. It's 5 a.m. UTC and actually $16,893. The predicted it says 16,824 with the lower bound as 16,698 and higher upper bound is 16,954. Right, so it's, it's within the range. So you see not a number in these four, that means these are the predictions of the future. In the next 30 minutes, it's expected to be remaining. Yeah, it's not that different, right? Obviously there is no, that, that there is no uh, much volatility in the market, right? All right, and now let's plot this. So I'm gonna plot this using the, uh, Oops, sorry. I'm gonna plot, plot that using the plot mechanism. So M dot plot, model dot plot, forecast, and uncertainty equal to true. So if I run this, this is plotted. So it shows you the date time from 12.01 to 12.25, which is the current date. And then this is the forecast. You see how the forecast is plotted. And you would see that these black dots, which is at the actuals, are within the within the boundaries. And that is where you see there are a few things that are not within the boundary. These are some spike anomalies. But for most of the period, the black dots, the the, the actuals are within these boundaries, and the mean is nicely following it. So this model, yes, you can trusted, but not really, right? There are so many other parameters that you would use to forecast. Again, this is just for learning purposes, and I hope uh, you're not using this to really forecast and you know run the models and make some money, right? This is only for you to understand how it all works. With that said, uh, thank you for watching.